Today, we are going to be learning about our nervous system. In this chapter, we learn about the brain, the spinal cord and nerves. Here's a quick warm up. George is playing with his younger cousin. They are singing rhymes. Even though George has not sung a rhyme for a long time, he remembers all the rhymes. Do you know where George stores all this information? Let us learn in this chapter. The nervous system has three parts. The brain, the spinal cord and the network of nerves. All these parts work together and help different parts of the body to send information to the brain. The brain receives the information and reacts to it. In this way, the brain controls how our body reacts to every situation. The messages from the brain are also passed on to different parts of the body through nerves. The transfer of information and the comprehension of said information is the reason why our body functions normally or properly or else we would have been a mush. The nervous system is divided into two parts. The central nervous system or the CNS and the peripheral nervous system that is the PNS. Now the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord and the PNS or the peripheral nervous system consists of the nerve networks. Now let us learn in detail what is the central nervous system. The brain controls all our thinking and reaction. All the senses are linked to the brain. What we feel, smell, hear, speak, all function in a tandem that is connected to the brain. The senses are how we take in information from the world around us but the brain is the one that assimilates all the information and decides how to act on it. Our brain does more than just react to information. It also controls our emotions, knowledge, memory and movement. Let us learn about our brain. The brain is situated inside our skull. There is fluid in between the skull and brain. Both the skull and the fluid protect the brain from any injury. The brain is divided into two halves or hemispheres. The left side of the body is controlled by the right hemisphere and the right side of the body is controlled by the left hemisphere. Moreover, in a right-handed person, the left side of the brain controls our language, and number skills while the right side controls our artistic skills and memory. I bet you did not know this. Did you know that the average human adult brain weighs around 1.3 kgs? It has a texture similar to that of a firm jelly and 75% of the brain is made up of water. It takes a lot of energy for the brain to work. The brain is not moving, but it is always working. In fact, the brain uses 20% of the body's total energy. This energy comes through blood. The brain is connected by blood vessels. With every heartbeat, the arteries provide 20-25% to 25 of the blood to the brain. The harder or more we think, the more oxygen and fuel is used by our brain through the blood. This can go up to 50% oxygen used by our body. The brain has three main parts, cerebrum, cerebellum and the brain stem or the medulla. Let us look into each one of them. Let's start with cerebrum. This is the biggest part of the brain and is located in the front and the topmost part of the skull. The surface of the cerebrum is called the cerebral cortex. Different parts of the cerebrum have different functions. The back part is connected with different parts of the body. The back part of the cerebrum controls the vision. The other functions of other parts are movement, hearing, 
language, touch and smell. We also think and store information in the cerebrum. It means all learning and thinking are done in the cerebrum. As cerebrum stores all the information, it means that all our memory is stored in the cerebrum. It controls all the voluntary activities of the body. I think now you know where George stored all his rhymes. He stored his rhymes in this part of the brain called the cerebrum. Now let us learn about the second part of the brain that is the cerebellum. This is situated at the back and in the bottom of the brain. This part of the brain controls the motor movement. The learning of the motor movements happens in the cerebellum. The skills like walking, writing, riding a bike, once learned are not forgotten. In fact, we use many of the motor skills without thinking. We might get a bit rusty when we are not using a certain skill. But we never forget. That is why people say that practice makes us perfect. The more we use a certain skill, the more the cerebellum becomes perfect in coordinating our body to perform that skill. The brain stem or the medulla. This is the connection between the brain and the spinal cord. This part is responsible for the involuntary body functions like respiration, pumping of the heart, digestion of food, vomiting and sneezing. Here is something for you to think. We know that cerebrum controls movement and cerebellum controls thinking and motor skills. Now walking is a motor skill. Is walking controlled by both parts of the brain? Yes, the cerebrum directs all the voluntary and involuntary motor functions of the body. While the cerebrum initiates the directions of any movement, the cerebellum contributes to well-coordinated, precise and accuracy of any movement. Thus, we can say that the cerebrum gives the order and the cerebellum executes the order. The whole brain works in a tandem. Some parts give orders, some parts execute orders and some parts are used to relay information. Each part of the brain is very important because it has a specific job to do. We are still learning how each part of the brain works and how they are all connected. Now let us learn about the third part of our nervous system, the spinal cord. The spinal cord connects the brain to the peripheral nervous system. The spinal cord is a bundle of nerve tissue. It is protected by a bony spinal column. The column is made of bones called the vertebrae. We have 31 pairs of spinal nerves, each matched to a segment of the vertebral column. The spinal nerve comes out of the spinal column through an opening between two adjacent vertebrae. Once outside the vertebral column, the nerve splits into branches. There are two separate bundles of nerves coming out and going into the spinal cord. So we have one set of nerves bringing information from all the sensory organs and one set passing the information from the brain to all sensory organs. Here's a tidbit for you. The spinal cord of an average human is smaller than the spinal column in which it is enclosed. The average length of the spinal cord of a man is 45 centimeters and for a woman it is 42 centimeters. Now let us learn about the peripheral nervous system or the PNS. Messages from and to the brain are carried through the nerves. Nerves are actually made up of many nerve cells. Nerve cells are also called neurons. Inside each nerve, there is a bundle of nerve fibers through which information passes. 
Nerves are in different sizes. The longest nerve connects your feet to your spinal cord. Nerves are mainly of two types, motor nerves and sensory nerves. Let us learn about motor nerves. Motor nerves connect your muscles to the brain. Brain tells the muscles what they should do through the motor nerves. Now let us learn about sensory nerves. These nerves connect all the sensory organs to the brain. These nerves carry information from the sensory organs of the outside world to the brain. Thus, nerves only send signals in one direction. Motor nerves from the brain to the muscles and the sensory nerves from the organs to the brain. The peripheral nervous system is further divided into two parts. The autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. Let us learn about the autonomic nervous system. This set of nerves work involuntarily. We use these nerves without any conscious thought. Bodily processes like breathing, digesting, blinking, sneezing, etc. are controlled by the autonomic nervous system, somatic nervous system. When we have to think about something for us to do, we use the somatic nervous system. Like we have to think whether we want to eat or not, reading, walking, etc. are controlled by the somatic nervous system. Here's a science top up for you. Sometimes our body reacts even before our brain tells us to do something. This action is called our reflex. Sometimes we do not have the time. So our body bypasses the brain. For example, before we even touch something hot, our hand moves back. This is our reflex. Doctors usually check our reflexes by hitting our knee with a hammer. How fast we react is how fast our reflexes are. Here's the glossary of the chapter. Peripheral, something that is on the edge. Voluntary movement, the movement we do after deliberate thought. For example, writing, reading, etc. Involuntary movement, this activity is done without any thought. For example, blinking and breathing, etc. Now that we have learned about our nervous system, let us do a quick mind map of the chapter. Our nervous system consists of two parts, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system consists of the spinal cord and the brain. The brain is divided into three main parts called the cerebrum, cerebellum and medulla. In the peripheral nervous system, we have two main systems that is autonomic nervous system and somatic nervous system. These both are connected by nerves. Nerves are of two types, motor nerves and sensory nerves. Now I have something for you to explore. Do a research on which part of the brain is responsible for which action and discuss it in your class.